Hello. How are you guys doing tonight? It is a beautiful night in Indianapolis. It is 69 degrees. It's very fallish outside. And um, I just left the house. PB, have, people have been asking me all day long, how's PB's cough? His cough is like non-existent today. Like it is completely gone. Um, he didn't cough once. He was running around. He was back himself again. I almost kind of wonder if you know, he just wasn't like feeling down for the day or something yesterday, because today he was completely back to normal. But thank you for asking, it means a lot to me. Um, and, but on the other hand, on the other hand, but in other news, Alex is really suffering. He was fine all day long. I kept on texting him, I was like, is your back okay? Is your tooth okay? The tooth isn't bothering him today, but like, his back was hurting him a little bit. And then he went out to dinner um, with a friend of his, and he, like, I was going to maybe go over there, but I ended up doing a live stream, and then I went over to visit Tanya because her son is in town visiting. Um, and so, and he's leaving tomorrow morning, so I wanted to go over there and see him tonight. But, uh, so I texted him. I was like, are you okay? He's like, yeah. He's like, I've been, you know, to Alex about his back, and he was like, yeah, I'm fine. He was like, my back doesn't really hurt that bad. And then I got home to get my camera because I charged my battery because I hadn't charged it earlier. And um, I came upstairs to see if he was like asleep already or whatever. And he was like sitting up in bed and he's like almost like crying. He's like, he's doesn't cry. He's not a crier out of pain, but he was like almost there. And he's like, I just, he's like, I can't get comfortable. He's like, my back hurts so bad, blah, 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 blah whatever. And um, so the doctor that he saw for all this stuff, prescribed him something, but it's like a, it's like a non-narcotic. I don't, I don't know what it is, but anyway, he's like, I just took one and he's like, I'm hoping it'll help. And he was, and so I just laid there with him for a second. I was like, is there anything I can do? And he was like, no. And I was like, can I rub your back? He's like, no, that'll just make it worse. Um, so I just sat there with him for a little bit and, um, and then he started drifting off and he said, you know, it's starting to feel a little bit better. I feel so bad for him. You know, it's so hard to just sit there and watch someone that's in pain and you can't do anything. I'm sure there's so many of you out there that like relate to that, but it's just, you know, it breaks my heart for him. He's in so much pain. And, uh, and Alex is somebody that's like really, really active, you know? So <clears throat> for him, and he, and he even said, he was like, I was fine all day. I was fine all day. It wasn't even until I came home that it started hurting. I don't know. And um, so... But he's asleep now, and hopefully tomorrow morning, you know, he gets to rest this weekend a little bit. So, um, he has a meeting tomorrow, and then after that, he's like, I'm just gonna be around the house, and I'm just gonna relax. And I was like, you need to, like, slow it down a little bit. And he was like, yeah, you're right. So, um, so that's with that. And then he brought me food home from the restaurant, so I sat there and ate it, and made sure that he was asleep before I left. He brought me these little, uh, they went to this restaurant. Um, it's like this upscale, like Mexican restaurant. And he brought me these little street tacos. And then he brought me this like rice stuff that had like mushrooms in it. It was delicious. And uh, so yeah, that was what I ate today. And um, the little street tacos had like uh, mashed potatoes in them. They were really good. Which is better than the Taco Bell that I was gonna get on the way home. So my day, how was my day? My day was good. I got up and uh, my nose was really driving me crazy. I've been trying to trim my beard every day so that I don't have to like, you know, cause it hurts, it pulled my trip. My trimmers pull on me if I don't like go in and uh, trim it every day. Well, not every day, but like if I do it like every third or fourth day, like it, it pulls, even if I put beard oil on it, like or the oil on the trimmer. So I have been trying to go in there every day and trim them or trim my beard just to keep it really short. But I always kind of like, then I have to go up here with scissors and I always forget this part is up here. So I think that's the part that always drives me crazy. I'm really thirsty, but there's nowhere to go through around up here and I don't want to, I just really don't want to stop at a gas station now that I've been vlogging. So anyway, um, so my day was good. I got up and, um, 
yeah, I, what did I do? I did uh, some meditations this morning and just kind of got myself like balanced for the day and um, all of that. I've been very calm today, it's strange. Like overwhelmingly calm. And then um, I did my video today about Trisha Paytas, so it's kind of over the top and hyped up. But anyway, Trisha is coming to Chicago November 4th. And <clears throat> I think it's no surprise that I'm a huge Trisha Paytas fan. So I was texting her yesterday and I was like, oh my God, I th I'm gonna, Alex and I are going to come and see the show. And so she's real excited about that. So I'm going to vlog the whole thing. Um, I mean, there's more to it than that. We're going to meet up. But I, I don't want to say anything about that until it actually happens, you know. Um, so anyway, I'm really excited about that. That's something to look forward to. Um, and then, let's see, what else did I do? I filmed my videos, and I went, well, I went and got coffee, and then I filmed my videos, and then I came home, and um, I took the dogs out a lot today. It was beautiful. It was like this beautiful fall day today, and it really, really reminded me of, um, so if you guys don't know, my favorite book and movie is To Kill a Mockingbird, and my mom and I used to watch To Kill a Mockingbird in the fall, and actually, I was thinking about this the other day. It's like, the book and the movie take place, like, during every season. Does the book take place during the winter? I mean, you don't see a Christmas or anything in it, but there is winter scenes in there. Um, so, but today was, like, a day that my mom and I, like, we would have had chili and watched To Kill a Mockingbird. Like, it was just one of those days. And, like, uh, the leaves are, you know, a little bit kind of starting to fall. And it was just beautiful. It was a beautiful fall day outside. And, um... I don't ever want to miss days like that, you know? Um, I remember at the end when my mom was in the hospital and um, she passed away in May and it was like spring was her favorite holiday or her favorite season. And um, there were some days when I would just be sitting there in the hospital room with her and it would be so gorgeous outside, you know? And I'd just be like, Mom, I wish you could be outside. She loved to walk outside in the spring. And I'd say, you know, Mom, I wish you could walk outside. It's so beautiful outside. And um, I vowed back then that I wasn't going to take days, you know, for granted weather-wise. That was beautiful. And today was one of those days. I mean, it was blue sky. It was absolutely gorgeous. And I know a lot of you guys are uh, weathering the hurricane. So if you are... Um, I hope that you're safe and I hope that you're staying out of harm's way. So yeah, I did that and then I filmed my videos and then I did a live stream and that was really fun. A lot of people came in there and um, yeah, it was just, I was trying to move it around. Anyway, um, so yeah, it was a great day. It was a very peaceful day. Um, and it's like, in broader pool, you guys. Can you guys hear this? There's so many people out. Well, because it is such a nice night. Oh, and Butler, you know, is back in session, and this is probably all the Butler students out. There's literally like one, two, three, four cop cars in a row, just right in the middle of the road, and five, one on the side. Can you guys see this? <laughs> This is like an area of Indianapolis. It's like a lot of bars, lots of like artsy stores, lots of like um, nice restaurants and stuff like that. Anyway, um, what was I going to say? I was over at Tanya's house tonight. You know, I had this moment. It was so funny. I was like laying on her couch and I was like sitting there with her and um, Nick was on the floor, her son, and... Um, he was like with the dog and Tani and I were joking we were watching this 2020 and um, I kept on like scratching her head and being like who's that who's that you know we were joking and um, and Nick said something he goes I miss this or something because he you know he moved <clears throat> and he lives with his girlfriend now in Florida and it was like it was so funny it's like you know sometimes those things that are just like so simple you take for granted you know like shopping at Walmart with Tanya like you know and it's like Like, that's just kind of, like, my life, you know? I was thinking about that, like, when I was on my way home about vlogging. I was like, what to vlog about, you know what I mean? Like, 
my life is just pretty simple. It just really is. And um, there's just not like a whole lot to tell. And that's the end of the vlog, and I'm not gonna ever vlog again. <laughs> no, that's not true. I'm not, I'm gonna can keep on vlogging. I love to vlog. But, um, you know, I was thinking about that. I was just like laying there, and I was like, those things, like the simplest moments in my life are the ones that I've taken for granted, you know, sometimes in the past. Just like, and then you don't even realize it until they're gone, and then you're like, oh God, I miss these days. I'm just like hanging out on Tanya's couch. I mean, Tanya and I back in the day, I mean, we could watch just hours of TV and movies and we go to the Red Box or the Blockbuster. God, way back in the day we go to the Blockbuster and, you know, we'd rent like three movies and just watch them back to back and just sit there and she'd make a huge fire in her fireplace and, you know, she'd make a paper plate up and put like cheese and fresh fruit and vegetables on it and she'd whip up some, you know, chip dip or some veggie dip and <clears throat> we'd just sit around forever and, you know, Nick would come home from his friend's house and, uh, you know, Eric would be downstairs snoring in the chair until he fell asleep, and it was just really not that deep, you know? Life is just really not that deep. Oh my God, speaking of which, okay, so you guys, I, you know I loved the book Dumplin' by um, Julie Murphy. Okay, so Julie Murphy's Dumplin' is being made into a movie, or it's already been made into a movie, but it's coming to Netflix, okay? They released today the very first song from the soundtrack, and it's Dolly Parton and Sia, and it's called Here I Am. You guys, if, you, if you're a Dolly Parton fan at all, you have to go listen to the song. It's fantastic. Oh my God, it is so good. I bought it on iTunes, and I'm just like down, I just like listen to it over and over and over and over again. It is so good. I'm like loving it. And the story of like Dumplin' is so great too. It's about this girl, and she's heavier, and her name's Willow Dean, but her mom calls her Dumplin'. The sequel to it, which is really not the sequel because it's about another character, it's called Puddin'. They're both of them fantastic. In some ways, I kind of liked Puddin' more than I liked Dumplin'. But anyway, so Willow Dean decides to enter this. I, I relate to her so much on the weight issue stuff. I just really do. And the thing is, is that she's like, throughout parts of the book, she's not like the most likable character. She's very real, you know, like she's not perfect. She doesn't claim to be perfect. You know, she gets shitty with her friends at times. I mean, she just is like a, such a real character. And that's what I fell in love with her about because she just was so real, right? Well, she and these other girls enter this beauty pageant. And so the whole thing is about this beauty pageant. And it is so good. Like, they even go to a drag show to try to learn how to, like, get ready for it. You guys, it is so, so, so good. And I cannot wait to see it as a movie. I'm, like, so excited about it. And then I hope they make uh, Puddin into a movie too. Puddin is a completely different storyline, but one of the girls that enters the pageant with Willow Dean, that's like one of her friends, she, like, she's Puddin. So the whole second book is all about her. And Willow Dean, who plays, is, who is Dumplin', I mean, there's parts of her in the second book, but like, I mean, she makes appearances, but it's not about her at all. It is all of a sudden very toasty in this car. So yeah, I'm excited about that. I don't know when that comes out. And then, um, what else? People have been asking me what I watch on Netflix lately. I've been watching Wentworth. I'm like watching kind of like a half an episode a day. So it's taking me a long time to get through. Um, but I'm loving it. Since I talked about American Horror Story on here the other night, I want to kind of talk about my reaction to the first episode, and I won't spoil it for anybody, okay? Because I know that, you know, people haven't watched it yet. I, um, I'll just tell you my feelings or my reactions to it. I was not disappointed. I, I really, really enjoyed it, and I thought, you know, like, and it's interesting because now that we're at, like, what is it, seven seasons or something, like, I feel like everybody has their favorite seasons for different reasons. Different seasons for different reasons. That was cute, wasn't it? And, like, last, uh, earlier when I was in my live stream and talking about it, it's like, all of these different people had different, uh, like, seasons that they liked the most and the reason why and things like that. And, um, you know, I was sitting there and I was, like, watching it 
this live stream and it was like funny to me like some of the people that come in there and I feel like I kind of know and stuff like that like which seasons were their favorites when they were saying like oh they loved Freak Show and I had such a hard time I almost couldn't even make it through Freak Show and um, the last one I didn't really love either what was it called Cult I still have three episodes that I have to finish I don't love it and um, I just felt like it was super dark um, but and they get seem to get gorier and gorier each season now the first episode of Apocalypse I really liked it. Um, I thought it was kind of a fine line between humor and uh, darkness, so I appreciated it. Um, some of my favorite actors are in it again, which I love. Uh, of course, Evan Peters. He's in every single one, and so is Sarah Paulson. Sarah Paulson's, like, so good in this one. Like, she is such a phenomenal actress anyway, but, like, this season, like, there's just something about her. I don't know. Well, I mean, how can I tell from one episode, right? But there's something that's just, like, so sinister about her, and I, I, I she really hasn't played has she yet? I mean, she really hasn't played, like, a sinister character yet. So, I mean, it's interesting to see kind of a different play, and but it's really good. Um, it's not what I thought it was. I mean, it's about the apocalypse. That's all I'm going to say. And again, and the one thing I like about it is it gets, like, right into the story. So you don't have to wait, you know, like... I feel like some of the other seasons, you kind of had to wait to find out what was going on. And you didn't really know. And blah, 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 whatever. But this one, like, gets, like, right into it. So I totally think it's great. Um, I was going to make a video. This is totally on a different subject. But since I'm talking about scary stuff... I was going to make a video today on um, my booktube channel talking about my... These are like jean shorts that I cut myself. And like one leg is so much longer than the other. Do you ever do that? <laughs> I cut them a long time. I mean, I've had them forever. But anyway, um, I literally live in cut off jean shorts all year, like all summer long. <laughs> or spring and summer. Winter, fall. No. Um, I mean, I will wear... I will wear my Birkenstock sandals and my cutoff jean shorts until it is too cold to do that. Okay, so um, what was I going to say? I was going to make a video today on my booktube channel talking about planning my like Halloween TBR, like my October scary books that I'm going to read. But oh my god, there are so many that I'm reading for October. It's like, I have to like really get on it. <laughs> I mean, I have like two books from my book club. And then I'm part of another book club. And then I have, like, three books that I already want to make sure that I read that month. And it's, like, I have, like, already, like, six or seven books that I have to read for October. So that doesn't leave me a whole lot else, but... Whatever. I love it. I love reading scary books during Halloween time. Oh my lord. I have no idea what the weather is supposed to be like this weekend. Pumpkin weather? Should I call it? I got online and I was looking at like the best treats for pumpkin spice this season. And did you guys know there's pumpkin pie uh, pop tarts? I need them so bad. I'm going, I think actually I'll try to go see if they have them tonight at Meyer. When I come up here and I turn back around, I'll go back the other way and I'll go to Meyer and see if they have them. I don't know what it is about the pumpkin spice thing this year. Like, I'm really into the whole pumpkin spice thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> the last couple years, it's like, you know, like, because everybody says that pumpkin spice is bad and, like, you shouldn't like it because it's so cheesy or whatever. But then, like, I kind of started buying into that and I was like, ew, I don't like pumpkin spice. But I really do like pumpkin spice. Like, I do. And so I'm just going to own it this year and I'm going to buy pumpkin spice craziness. I like, I love it. So far, I've gotten pumpkin spice snickerdoodles, pumpkin spice covered yogurt, yogurt pretzels. Those were really good. I got the, they had those at Walmart, but I saw last night, but I, I got them at Wal, I got them at Meyer. And I think they also have them at Kroger. Or maybe I, did I get them at Kroger? I don't think, did I get them at Kroger? I might have gotten them at Kroger. But I've seen them everywhere. They also have like caramel and apple cider kinds. Oh my God, they have so many good things. But like literally, it's September 14th and all the Halloween stuff's out already. Or would you consider that fall stuff? I mean, I guess I would consider it fall stuff, but it really is like Halloween themed, you know? 
can't remember where we were last night, but Tiny was like, oh my God, they're already clearing down aisles to put the Christmas stuff up. Oh, we were at Walmart last night. And she was like, they're already clearing down aisles to start putting Christmas stuff up. I was like, no, they're not. She goes, look, right here. And we looked. And you couldn't tell that they were putting Christmas stuff up. But she was convinced that it was going to be Christmas stuff. I was like, Tony, this is not Christmas stuff. It's just they're clearing the aisles. And she goes, I, we're going to come back and the Christmas stuff's going to come back. I mean, I would be convinced of that. We, like, start Christmas so early. It seems to me, like, okay, it seems weird to me that we're, like, right around the corner from Christmas, which we really are, whether you want to believe it or not. I mean, it's September, October, November. I mean, we're closer to Christmas almost or the Christmas season than we are to summer, which seems crazy. And, um... Last Christmas, I read so many Christmas books and listened to so many Christmas books on Audible. Um, so there's aren't, there aren't even really that many anymore for me to listen to. <laughs> for the book club, we picked um, Holidays on Ice by John uh, David Sedaris, because I've never read it. And we picked Let It Snow by John Green, Lord Miracle and Maureen Johnson. And I think it's Maureen Johnson that wrote it, but one of Maureen Johnson or Lauren Miracle, I think it's Maureen Johnson, just wrote this book, and it's gonna be the first part of a series called Truly Devious, and it's a young adult book about this girl that's a detective and she goes to this boarding school. It was really, really good. I was like so into it. I just wish the sequel had come out. Because <laughs> it just kind of ended and you couldn't find anything out. I don't love that about books. this year. It's so weird to think that. My dad's 78. It's like you don't ever think that your parents are going to be that old, you know? And it's like one day you wake up and it's like it's hard for me because with my dad, like he still, he doesn't really look that, you know? And he's still like pretty agile and he goes out and does all kinds of stuff. So it's hard for me because like I don't think of my dad that age, you know what I mean? But the reality is, I mean, he's almost 80. It's so, it's so bizarre. people calling me late at night. <laughs> Did you ever just get fixated on something and you just start looking at it and you're like... I was looking at this car and it was like shifting lanes and I was like, what is it doing back there? It was like going with one lane and then it was like another lane and... I literally, when I was growing up in school, I could just like sit out and sit and look out a window forever. <laughs> Teachers would never put me next to the window. Because I had such bad attention deficit disorder. I always like got put in the front of class and I hated it. So whenever I got to like pick where I wanted to sit, I always sat. I mean, if you have social anxiety where you sit, you always sit in the back of class, right? And so I would always sit in the back of class. But like when I was younger, teachers, when they could decide where I would sit, you know, I mean, I guess teachers always could decide where I would sit. But my teachers would always put me in the front row center, just standing there, you know, which was like bad enough, first of all, because that just was like the worst seat in the house, right? Let's just be for real. Second of all, because as soon as a teacher would turn her head, like somebody was throwing something at me or doing something at me, you know? But, you get over it in time. Somebody messaged me today and was like, have you done a video about talking about being, like, or about bullying, like, in current times? And it's like, I don't really know what to say about that. It's, you know, it's honestly, like, it's a different world um, now than it was then, you know? And I was actually kind of thinking about that a little bit. It's interesting that I'm saying this about the front seat, you know, like... When I was in elementary and junior high, like, sure, people were mean to me and people bullied me and stuff like that. But there was also kind of like, you know, like, people could be, like, mean to me, but then we would go, like, on a field trip and it was like we were all students together. Does that make sense? Like, like in class, like, I was the, the class joke, like, that people would, like, bully me and make fun of me. I mean, I had friends in classes and stuff like that, too. But, like, then when I would be on, like, a field trip or... You know, like, I don't know, like, it just, people weren't mean to me 24 hours a day. That just wasn't the case. Now, when I got into high school, it was a little bit different. Um, but you know those scenes, like, 
Uh, you know, and we didn't go to a lot of parties in high school. I mean, we didn't go to a lot of parties where popular people were at. But you know those scenes in high school where they always bring, like, the person that's not, like, super popular and then they show up and they're like, what is she doing here? Okay, like, I can remember going to parties with friends of mine. Not not often because I was so constantly nervous about it and who'd be there and all this kind of stuff. But, like, I never got that reception from people, you know? Like, if we went to a party and there was, like, people there that didn't like me, like, it was kind of like, okay, we're not in school, who'd care? Like, that was kind of, like, the attitude a little bit. Like, they weren't trying to pick my life apart off of school grounds, if that makes sense. So, you know, today I feel like it's a completely different world. I feel like social media has changed all that, you know? Like, I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like social media has really, really changed all of that. And so it feels like, you know, a 24-hour attack on, on kids, I guess. And I don't know really how you get away from that, except for just not be on social media, maybe. Um... But then don't you want to, like, I think the, the, the urge to want to know what people were saying would be there. So I think, like, you know, it would be really, really hard at that age. I don't know. I don't really know how schools handle it today. I don't know anything about it. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart when I hear these stories about it. It really, really does. And, um, you know, I don't know the answer to it. I, I, I really don't. You know, like, I mean, I feel blessed that I got to sit across the table from my bully and have a conversation and hug it out, but it wasn't hugging it out right away. I mean, it was a long conversation and I had some hurt resentments and feelings over it, you know, and, and I was also in my thirties, you know, I wasn't like right on the heels of that. And I remember right after that, like my friend and I and Alex went to my 20 year high school reunion and everybody was so nice to me. And I remember my friends who had always like been defensive of me and had my back and stuff like that. She was like, why are you, like, so easily accepting these people's, like, forgiveness? Like, these people were coming up to me and they were like, oh, I am so sorry how I treated you in high school and blah, blah, blah. And you know, they had, like, read an article I had read, written in, like, I think it was, like, the local paper or something. And they were like, we read the article and I feel so bad. And blah, blah, blah. I was like, no problem. You know, like, okay, like, you know, I mean, I'm not going to sit there and have it out with somebody at a reunion, you know? And I remember my friend was so upset with me and she was like, why are you just letting them get away with this? And I was like, it's been 20 years. Like, I don't, like that is so much anger to hold on to in my heart. Like, I just don't want to anymore. Oh Lord, <laughs> I didn't see that bump coming. I was like, I just don't want to anymore. I, I just don't want to hold on to the anger anymore. You know what I mean? It's so much easier not to live that way. spa. I could use a spa day. Spa days are expensive. It's one thing to get your hair cut. It's another thing to have a spa day. Oh, I used to get massages all the time. Oh my god. At my hair salon, I used to get um, massages all the time. And um, I used to like Like, before I'd ever had a massage, I was always kind of, like, weirded out by it. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm good. I don't need to be underneath the sheet and stuff, right? And so then I started getting massages, and it was like, after that first one, I was like, I don't care. Like, <laughs> this is fantastic, and I feel like I'm getting my hair done, and I have a massage, and I got my, you know, Starbucks on the way home today, and it's just like, oh, my God, what a perfect day. And I think, like, it's so expensive to do, but for, you know, people to... I don't know, even just go, like, Tanya and I, God, when we go get pedicures together, and that's cheap, um, I mean, that's a spa day itself, I sit in that chair for an hour, Tanya and I used to go, like, uh, we'd usually go, like, every two or three weeks, not every two weeks, but every three weeks, she'd get a manicure and a pedicure, and I would get just a pedicure, and I'd sit in that chair, that, Oh my God, the first time I ever got a pedicure, I thought I was gonna come out of that chair. I literally thought I was gonna come out of that chair. Where am I at on time, 21 minutes? I thought I was gonna come out of that chair. I, honest to God, like when she like 
got that tool underneath my toe, which my toes, of course, afterwards, I was like, oh my God, they look perfection. So now I'm like totally sold on the pedicure. But back then I was like, oh my God. And she's like lifting my foot up and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, this is too much. This is too much. And then one time, and I was probably 20 pounds heavier than I am now. One time, Tanya convinced me to get my eyebrows waxed. Never again. Never, 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 never again. And it was right before my old passport picture. And, um, oh my God, it was so bad. It hurt. First of all, it hurt so bad. And then this girl that was, like, doing my eyebrows... Tiny kept on telling her like to go in like thinner and they were so thin they looked so stupid I was so mad and um, she was like she was like do you not like them and I was like they're really thin and she was like but they look really nice and I was like and they look really nice you know but I'm heavy and they don't look good on me they look like a potato with little some little eyebrows and no I don't like them but I didn't say that to her and I just was like tipped her paid her and left it wasn't her fault. I should never have got them done, you know? And I've never gotten them done since. And I don't tweeze them. I use that little nose hair trimmer thing on my eyebrows. And my hairstylist, she trims them up for me when I go in there. She trims them up for me when I go in there. <laughs> Did you ever just listen to the sounds? I love sounds. I think it reminds me, like I've said this on here before, I think it reminds me of like road tripping with my dad and he would have like his window down and I'd be like in the back seat asleep and I'd be like, you know when you're like half asleep and you're like half awake and you're just like back there listening and I'd hear like all the sounds and you know, he'd get off in the interstate and go to a truck stop and I'd hear him get out and get in, you know, after he'd like pump the gas and when he got a Coke or whatever and... like all of that, you know, all those sensory things. Oh my God, it's going to stop. I'll be right back. Okay. There's an Arby's right across there. Do you guys have Arby's where you live? I love Arby's so much, but I have not had Arby's in forever because it's roast beef sandwiches and I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat roast beef sandwiches. Um, but Arby's is so good. And they also have these potato cakes. And then they have Jamocha shakes. And the Jamocha shakes are... Oh my God. Back in the day when I had to go to the dentist, um, my dad would always say, when you go to the dentist, you get a Jamocha shake and potato cakes. And I was like, that got me through the dentist. I never really had an, an issue going to the dentist. Like, I never hated it when I was growing up. Like some people don't like the dentist like or have a fear of it. I never, like that never bothered me. my dinners had like this treasure chest thing in it's like waiting area and you could pick like a toy out of it and I thought that was like the coolest thing in the entire world they were like plastic little like G.I. Joe guys and stuff like that I don't know why I was so excited about that I remember the first time I ever had to get a tooth drilled you know that smell I remember thinking to myself like this, I don't know why, but I remember thinking to myself, and I don't know how old I was at the time. I have no idea. Probably high school. But I was like, this is how death smells. <laughs> that, that, you know what I'm talking about? When it's like drilling into that bone. Or not the bone, but the tooth, the bone, the tooth. That was the only thing I didn't like was the smell. I remember I, when I had to get my very first root canal. Have I only, I think I've only had one root canal. And um, everybody talked about, oh my God, root canals are so horrible. They're so horrible. They're so horrible. It's all I'd ever heard. I was so panicked. I was so terrified to do, um, hold on, please don't turn off. Please don't switch off. Okay. Um, I was so terrified to get a root canal because I had heard such horrible things about it, right? And um, let me tell you the worst thing about a root canal is that uh, they're expensive as shit. So, and the guy that I went to, because I was going to this dentist and then she ended up, like she didn't do root canals, so she had to send me to like, what would that be, a dental surgeon or somebody? You guys probably know more than I do. I don't know, it's been forever since that happened. But anyway, I was probably in, I don't know, 
my late 20s when I, that happened. So she sent me like literally upstairs to get this root canal. I was like sitting there and she was like, um, well, when do you want to do it? I can schedule it for you. And I was like, uh, I get whenever, I guess. And I'm like literally in the chair and she's like, calls up there and she's like, well, they can get you in right now. And I'm like, okay. And then it was like 700 or $800 or something. And I had to pay for it up front before I got it done. I was like, oh my God. I can remember thinking at the time, because I was like, you know, of course working and not making a lot of money. I was like, where is this going to come from? I'm going to have to move money from savings over to my checking. That's just the story of my life anyway in the past. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to move over, you know, savings and checking and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, just, we have to do it. I mean, we have to get it done. What are you gonna do, you know? And so, um, we, so I went up there and I remember the guy was like really nice too. And he was like, okay, so we're gonna do your root canal. And he like showed it to me. And I don't know how they do it now. Like I know so many people that go to these dentists where they have like TVs and movies and all kinds of stuff. Like that is not my dental experience at all. Okay, my dental experience is, um, no TV, no movies, no music, none of that stuff. So anyway, well, music sometimes. Mostly just lots of talking. And then they ask me questions and I'm like, your hand's in my mouth. What do you want me to say? I can't talk while your hand's in my mouth. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, so, you know, uh, how are the dogs? <laughs> have you guys seen those videos of people have gotten their wisdom teeth taken out? Oh my God. So, um, I... When I went up there and he was like, this is what we're gonna do and I'm gonna show you on the computer screen the whole time that we're doing it, I'll show you. And I was like, okay. And he numbed the shit out of my tooth. Like I remember, he goes, the worst thing, he was the worst pain you're gonna feel is the needle. That's what he told me. And so he like gave me this huge shot and I remember it hurt like hell. I was like, oh my God. But like literally like 20 seconds later, it was completely numb. And I was like, oh, okay, that's not bad. And um, so then he like numbed my tooth and then, like, he went in and he showed it, and he, like, drilled all the way down. And then, like, they took a, the nerve out, I guess is what they do. I don't remember, really, but I do remember he showed me this, like, little plastic thing. And he goes, we're going to put that in there as a replacement, and then we're going to fill it up, and then they're going to put a crown on it. And I was like, oh, okay. And um, so he did that, and then I can't remember how they sealed it. Or maybe I didn't do that until I got my crown. No, because I went right up there that day. I don't know how they did all that. But I do remember that um, that was so gross to me when they took that thing off, like the fake tooth or whatever they did, the mold of the tooth. They took it off to put my crown on. And when I went, I, I was like, oh my God, there's nothing there. There's like, oh my God. It's like, it creeps me out. Like that feeling of my tongue and like that open socket. I was like, <laughs> do you guys know what I'm talking about? Oh my God. I did not like that. I used to want to get veneers, except for they're so expensive. And, um, but you have to, like, have, like, all of that kind of weirdo dental stuff done. I know some of you out there have veneers, okay? You're better than I am because I could not go through the work that it takes to have those veneers where they sharpen down your teeth and then they put the thing on. I couldn't do it. I could not do it. Like, I don't have issues with going to the dentist, but it's, like, stuff like that. Like, when I start visualizing it, it just kind of, like, creeps me out. But other than that, I haven't really had any bad, like, dental experiences. I had braces in high school. I never wore my retainer. My teeth completely grew back. Um, yeah. And I haven't really ever been in, like, the hospital that many times. I think I've only ever been in the hospital one time. Is that true? Well, when I get hit by a van... That was when I was drunk, when I was 19, but they just took me to the emergency room, and then my dad came and he got me out. And um, that was bad, oh my God. I literally got hit by a van, okay? I was drunk, and um, turned and looked, and this van, I had dark clothes on, they couldn't see me in the road, and they hit me like that, and I like they threw me like 50 feet. I've told that story before. Um, I think I did a whole video about it. It was horrible. They're like on, like, they're like on their lifeline things saying that they have my, like, they have my dad's son and they're like, who my dad at the time was like, a big deal at the hospital. And they're like, we don't think he's going to make it. And I'm like sitting there laying there and I had like, I was like, I just need another drink. Um, and so anyway, that was, oh my God, that was a mess. And then the other time that I was in the hospital was when I had, um, an epileptic seizure. My, for my grandma seizure 
and um, yeah, that was scary. But that's a story for another time. I've done. I actually did a whole video about that. Do you know what's interesting is like that's one video that I get a lot of people that say like thank you so much for doing this video. Like this video, I just got diagnosed with epilepsy. Thank you so much. Like this video really really helps me. And it's interesting, you know. Like you wouldn't think that there were that many epileptics out there. I mean, honest to God, like I got diagnosed as being an epileptic when I was like 27 or 28. I have juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, and I have. I don't know that I've ever met another person other than in a doctor's office that has epilepsy. Like, I just haven't. Other than, like, you guys out there that message me and you're like, I have epilepsy or I have the same kind of epilepsy as you. A lot of people message me that. And it's like, um, I haven't really met a lot of other people, you know, that have epilepsy. But I get comments literally me every day, every other day on that video that I did a long time ago. I think it's just called I, have a Se I Had a Seizure. Um... One of the interesting things to me is that people always say to me, like, why are, like, like I have epilepsy too and I'm embarrassed or how do you talk about it so op openly? And it's like, I think my attitude about it, is, I don't know, like, I never thought to be embarrassed of it, honestly, you know? It's like, um, what am I supposed to do about it? I got diagnosed with it. I'm on a medical regimen. You know, I see a neurologist regularly. I get my levels tested. You know, what else am I supposed to do? You know, there's not like really a whole lot else I can do about it other than that. And, you know, they've tried to switch my medications a couple times, but I didn't like them. So, or I didn't like the effects of it. So we switched back and, you know, it is what it is. And, um, I feel blessed that I've only had one grand mal seizure in my life. I know there are people that have them like all the time. I can't, I, and like literally can't like hold a job or go to school or do anything because they have so many seizures. I can't imagine that's not my experience. So, um, you know, I was just told like, take this medicine for, I had all these books when I went into his office. I've been reading, you know, like that's one of the things they tell you when you go to the doctor is like stay off the internet and don't read. Well, there weren't really, a, like the internet wasn't a big, as big a deal then, but I had all these books, you know, on epilepsy and I remember I went in there and I started asking him all these questions. It was like my first neurology appointment and I'll never forget him. He just, he took the books and he just like shoved them to the side. He goes, you need to just do what I tell you to do and everything will be fine. And I was like, but, and he goes, you just need to do what I tell you to do. He goes, you have a very simple form of epilepsy. He goes, you have epilepsy with seizure disorder with a, a chronic migraines. Um, and he goes, if you do what I tell you to do, he goes, it will be fine. And I said, okay. And honestly, like the migraines are worse for me than the epilepsy is. But I'm so used to them now that it's like, I really can function pretty high with having migraines on a daily basis. Um... <clears throat> I did like one round of Imitrex and I hated it. I just absolutely hated it. And it was so expensive and I could, insurance didn't cover it. And it was like, I, you had to take one at the time that the migraine hit and then like one an hour later. And it never worked for me. It never took the, the migraine away. And I remember I had to pay something like $200 for nine or eight or nine pills or something like that. And I was like, this is crazy. Like I can't afford this, you know? And, um, so I remember asking my doctor and he was like, probably your best bet is just to take a leave. And ever since then, because I can't take anything with aspirin because it counteracts with my medicine for epilepsy. So ever since then, I've just taken um, a leave and it's worked, you know, like, it, does, it dulls it, it doesn't take it away. Um, when I first got diagnosed with migraines, my migraines were really, really horrible. And it's like during pressure times around like, you know, the year, um, like definitely in times of high humidity, I have worse migraines and stuff like that. Or when it's gonna rain, I can always feel when it's gonna like just be a total rainstorm. Excuse me, cause I can feel it in my head. Uh, but earlier I used to take like a leave on a pretty regular basis, like maybe every day, every other day. And he was really worried about my stomach because your stomach can be affected by that or your liver. So um, now I really try to only take it at times when my migraines are absolutely, absolutely horrible. Like, and I literally can't function. But there's not a day that goes by that I don't have some kind of migraine. Um, 
And there's a huge difference between migraines and headaches. So, I mean, there just is. Um, and I can, you know what's weird is I can kind of tell the difference between a migraine and a headache. And like if I have a headache, like a leave takes it away right away. But like if I have a migraine, it just dulls it. Migraine is like really more like pressure right here for me. Um, whereas headaches, like I get headaches all over sometimes, you know, but if I take a leave, it usually goes right away. Um, with a migraine, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes like, um, it's the reason why I wear sunglasses so much because um, it, the sunglasses, especially, I'll show you, these sunglasses, that are like highly reflected, they really guard my eyes because I'm really light sensitive um, on days that I'm having migraines. And so those sunglasses really, really help me a lot. But the other thing that's bad about this is that these sunglasses, they pinch the sides of my head, which is where like the pressure is anyway, mostly. So sometimes like it, it hurts. And then my other sunglasses, they don't do that. So they're like not as heavy on my ears. Isn't it crazy we have to think about stuff like that? Like, do you guys do the same thing? You're like, oh, I have this pair of sunglasses, but sometimes they pinch me too hard, so I wear another pair of sunglasses. Is there anybody else out there that's open about it, that's willing to say, like, I'm an epileptic too? Like, I don't think there's anything to be ashamed about it for, you know? Um, you know, I think the other reason why I'm not ashamed about it is that for so long, like, they couldn't figure out what was happening. I was having, um, like, I was shaking a lot. Like, I was tested for Parkinson's, actually. Because um, they knew it was something neurological. And, it, interestingly enough, they don't know if it was hereditary. Because my grandfather died so young. Um, he was 39 when my, he passed away, my mom's dad. So they don't know that maybe, like, it wasn't genetic. And maybe I, I got it from him. Um, or if when I hit my head, because I landed on my head when I was hit by the van, that maybe it's a result of that. They don't really know. But my neurologist back in the day was always, I don't ask him anymore, but he's like, does it really matter? He was like, you know, you just need to deal with it now. And, uh, and he's just very that, you know. And, and I, I appreciate that about him as a doctor. He's just kind of no, no, no nonsense. And, um... He, so anyway, um, they, they couldn't, for, I mean, I was seeing him before I got diagnosed with epilepsy. They couldn't find out what it was. And so what happened was when I had the car accident, um, like within an hour, they had me hooked up to what is that? Like a EEG or an EKG, the one on your head. And they tracked it like right there. They could see seizure disorder. Okay. Now please do not turn off. Every time I turn this camera, sometimes it turns off. Okay, so they could sense seizure disorder and that's how they diagnosed me. Um, but before that, like when I would just go in for regular testing, there was like not any seizure activity, so they couldn't track it. Um, so I don't know, for me, I think like part of me not being like embarrassed about it maybe, I never thought to be embarrassed of it, honestly, but maybe part of it was I was just so happy that they had found out what it was, do you know what I mean? Um, and that I just was willing to do what they told me to do or he told me to do at that point. Um, and he's been a wonderful doctor. He's been amazing. I mean, I've had the same neurologist all this time. I mean, sometimes I see his partners, but like very rarely. And I don't go, I don't go in very often anymore. Um, but I don't know. It's always interesting to me when I get that comment, like from people like, why aren't you ashamed of it or embarrassed? Not like they're telling me that I should be, but they're like, I, I have epilepsy too and I am embarrassed. Like, how did you work through it? I don't think that's gonna help anything with me, you know? I think I just have to be aware of what I'm doing and, um, you know? So, anyway, yeah. I never read any books about epilepsy. I didn't take them home. I took them home and then I didn't just, they're probably in my basement right now. I didn't read any of them. I didn't like search them out. It's just like, this is what he told me to do, just do it. It was funny because, uh, well, it wasn't funny, but, well, I guess, Alex had to go get an MRI, yes, was it yesterday or the day before? Um, two days ago. When did we go have dinner? I had to stop it because I was just sitting there talking about <laughs> my friend and her husband, and I kept on saying their names, and I think that they would prefer to probably <laughs> maybe be anonymous, I don't know, I've never asked them, and they have never asked to be in a vlog. Um, so anyway, we were, I was trying to think about what was the night that we were over at our friend's house for dinner, because that was, the day that Alex had gotten 
the MRI. So that would have been that would have been yesterday when I would have talked about it on here. But anyway, whenever it was, um, I said to him, I said, did you have a hard time with the MRI? And he was like, no, not at all. And he was like, why did you? And I go, well, I haven't had an MRI in a long time. I haven't, you know, had to. And so I haven't had like, you know, uh, my levels have been fine and all that kind of stuff. And I said, do they still, like, is it covered? Because I had heard that they, like, do, like, you know, MRIs that are, like, half and half or whatever now. And he goes, yeah, it was completely covered. And I said, um, do they do that? Is it that noise where it's, like, that? And he goes, yeah. And I go, oh, my God, that noise scared the hell out of me. I hated it. I just remember feeling like I was trapped in there. I don't really have, like, a huge issue with small spaces. I don't love them, but I don't dislike them. Um, but, oh, speaking of, I have to tell you guys something. But anyway, so... I was sitting there and I was like talking to him about it and he was like, did you really have that hard of a time with an MRI? And I said, no, because I knew I could push a button and get out of it, but I knew I would have to do it again. So I kind of felt trapped, but like I just like trapped because I knew that I was going to have to do it. Right. So anyway, he was like, um, yeah, he was like that, like, D -d 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 -d. he goes, it kind of made me feel like a house music beat. So I didn't dislike it. I was like, how do you turn everything into something to do with music? I thought it was so cute. So anyway, he didn't have a hard time with the MRI at all, but I know lots of people that have hard times with MRIs. Um, oh, this is what I was going to tell you. So, you know, people always ask me, like, what do you watch on YouTube and all this kind of stuff? Let me tell you what I watch the majority of on YouTube, okay? Whales, on whale, like, whale watching boats, watching whales. I love to watch those. Did you guys see the one where the whale just breaches out of nowhere and it, like, splashes the hell out of that boat? That's my favorite one. I watch that all the time, over and over and over again. I just get so excited for those people. I think it was filmed a long time ago, but I'm still excited for them. Like, seriously, I am. And, um... Then, the other thing I watch is shark videos. I know, like, I'm terrified of sharks, but I watch, like, great white shark videos, and they're always the ones that are called, like, the world's scariest great white, or great white attacks cage, or whatever. I always watch these videos. Well, this trailer for this movie came up, and I've never heard of this movie. Belching, excuse me. Or hiccuping. And the movie is called Frenzy. Have you guys heard of this movie? Oh my god, I want to see it so bad. So it's about these people and they're on a plane and then the plane crashes into the water. It just gets worse and worse and worse, okay? So they have to like go down and like switch. They show this all in the trailer. They have to like switch this thing off so people will come in like this locator. But then these two girls make it to this island and these sharks are like, I don't know, like super shark sharks. And they're like bouncing out of the water and taking people's boats and all this kind of stuff. It's called Frenzy. Have you heard of it? Oh my God, I want to see it. I like really want to see this movie. It looks really good. I mean, it looks really cheesy, but it looks really scary because of course anything about sharks scares me. But then I'm sitting there, and then I get into the whole thing. Like, this is the rabbit hole of YouTube for me. Then I get into this whole thing where I'm watching, like, trailers for movies. And these are movies that came out, like, in 2016, and I've never heard of them. And um, there was this movie called 12 Feet Deep or something like that. It had something to do with a pool. If you've seen this movie, let me know in the comment section below if it's good or not. So this girl, these two girls are in a pool, and I think they're sisters or something. And they're, like, swimming laps. And it's like Friday night or something like that or Saturday night. I don't know. And they're like swimming pool and they're like underneath and they're like racing each other. Well, while they're racing, the cover closes over them and they're stuck inside this pool for an entire weekend and they can't breathe and stuff like that. And apparently somebody walks out and does something, but I don't know because I didn't see that part of that, past that part of the trailer. <gasps> I want to see this movie. I think it's called 12 Feet Deep. I have it written down at home. I have so many post-it notes everywhere. Like, do you guys live like that? I constantly am writing stuff down and putting it on a post-it note. I have no idea how long I've been vlogging now. <laughs> this one says 4 minutes and 28 seconds. <laughs> and then I'll be talking to my friend and I'll be like, Oh my god, I almost mentioned your video. Or I mentioned your name in a video the other day and I had to edit it out. And she'll be like, Well, you could have talked about me. I don't care. <laughs> oh... Somebody said in my comment section about yesterday, about me and Tanya vlogging at Walmart, they said, thank God you're out of your car for once. <laughs> I mean, it's like 12 o'clock at night. Where should I go? <laughs> do me go sit in the Denny's and uh, do a uh, vlog over the moons over my hammy? You guys are probably like, yes, please do that. Well, I don't eat ham because I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> so. 
Denny's is another restaurant that's kind of out for me because I just don't like, I mean, I can go in there and have like pancakes or something, but who'd care? Um, because they have the best ranch in the entire world. They have the best loaded fries, but they're loaded fries with no bacon on it. It's kind of like, what's the point? that one lump. Do you hear that bird? That bird always reminds me of To Kill Mockingbird. So anyway, I think it's actually on Netflix. If you've never seen To Kill Mockingbird, it's on Netflix. I think I'm almost positive. Well, listen, you guys, I'm going to get off here now. Um, thank you for listening to me ramble for however long I went on. And um, I will be back tomorrow. I love you guys, and I'll see you then. Bye.